This will be mercifully small, short, and succinct. Thank you, David, for putting a lot about the ref, because that's actually helped me tremendously. Um, research structure at the university, as David alluded to earlier, is different in that they try to build capacity, they try to get everybody research active. Fail sometimes, but they do try. The dean of the faculty that we're in, life science education, recently came up with the idea when he first landed anyway of, of cognate groups. In other words, he wanted to, I think I'm going to turn this off if I'm not careful, um, put together a novel way of introducing people together who do research and who may be interested in research to look at collaboration across faculty units. The problem with chiropractic is that if you're in an institution where there's only chiropractic, you have a good focus, but at the same time, it can lead to real barriers when it comes to talking to people outside chiropractic. Gaze mentioned the NHR initiative. We have the same thing. We have half of our faculties nursing. So it's very difficult to avoid the NHS. Um, there is a great opportunity to integrate. It's just a matter of choosing it and doing it. Cognate groups allows that. We also have education. We also have sport. So we've got a whole raft of people. Chiropractic's a small section in that. Within that st same structure, we also have research units that identify individual bits of research. And the it used to be a chiropractic research unit when we first started off, but the dean at that time didn't think that was appropriate. So it had to change in some way. So we made it a little bit more sanitary. And it became the clinical technology and diagnostics research unit. Because we do bits with equipment, and we do bits with people. There's research centers, which are groups of units which actually fit together to produce a coherent area of research that then is referable. And that's the key component. The key component of all of this is a ref submission. We can't avoid it. We have to do it. In fact, it's great to see the ACC doing it now. I led one with the word chiropractic on it, not the last ref, the one previous. There were four of us in it. Dave, myself, the guy who's now left, Drew Hoish, and Annabelle. And we came out of it with a sort of smattering of nationally important, little bit of internationally recognized and a couple of unclassifieds. But we registered it. And we went into a hostile environment because the group we go in, there's not one for chiropractic. The group we go into is allied health or something like that. And the people who are referring and commenting on your papers aren't chiropractors because even though the RCC and the BCA were asked to actually submit some names at the time, they didn't because they didn't understand REF. And so we only had physios commenting on our research, which was cool. I enjoy going into a lion's den full of lions. But we went in anyway. But because we didn't grow critical mass, because this is another factor between that ref and the very last ref we had, we were divided and sunk into other sections. It gave us a chance to have a, t a place at the table for a time. And so I actually found out how to run a ref, and I then decided I'd never do it again. Um, it's a huge administrative burden. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, and it does distract you from the things you enjoy doing, like research. So you have to have an administrative framework. And these days, it's a little bit more formulaic, but it's still difficult. It's not an easy thing to do. We're now planning for REF 2026, because 2021 is already in place. That's what universities do. We're not a big university in terms of research. We are actually somewhere near the bottom. I strongly support it, and I think it's great, but we're at the bottom. And we fight our corner at every turn. Compared to the ACC, I think we have a few more students and a little bit more leverage. It's a difficult hill because we're not fighting other universities. We're fighting Russell Group. And the Russell Group universities, this is one, by the way, take something in the region of 95% of the money that comes out of the government. And they want to keep that money. So what they do is they change the rules at every ref. 
just slightly, to make them more favoured. And that's what the people at the university involved in admin are dealing with, trying to find the route to get a slightly bigger edge. So every single ref we've been in, they've changed the rules about who could be submitted and who couldn't, and how many is your number. In one ref, we had one where we had an individual person put in. He was seen as internationally excellent, levered a lot of money, huge amount of money compared to his one individual. And the next time the ref was announced for the following time, they changed the rules so that could never happen again. So it's a continual battle to interpret and get the best of the interpretation. And the, there was a report recently that's looking at a way of balancing it in favour of the Russell groups called the Stern Report, which looks at critical mass. So how many people can you put in? The more people you put in and the better quality of those people, the more money you get. So it's quite difficult. It's a game. It's a good game. A bit of fun. But it wastes your time. Sorry, for the money you get. Um, I was put in the ref when I left the AECC and went to set up the course in uh, Wyatt. I was put into a ref with sport. At that point, strangely enough, at that point, my level of recognition was internationally leading, top end. There were two other people went in at the same time. We had papers in good journals, we had money, and we had good collaborations and so on. Because of that, we levered £75,000 a year freebie to a group of people. Sadly, I got to see nothing of that. So I had then to compete with others for money from outside. It teaches you a lesson. So I'm not overly enamoured. But I have no choice. Um, faculty research, therefore, is split into different sections. And it's all about making people do research, making them interested in research, uniting research, collaboration across groups. That's the key. Because it's not just doing research, it's quality of research that counts. So, quality of research. You probably recognise this guy. Alistair. Um, we have a range of different topics within the research group simply because there's lots of opportunities. So we have clinical work. Um, David's doing stuff with PROM, with the other David, and with a variety of others. So there's a variety of clinical things going on at that level. I've got two, three PhD students, two in Canada and one in Australia, who are looking at aspects of things like patient-centeredness, um, the, the course aspects that sort of tailors into education, looking at jurisprudence, ethics, and business being taught in courses around the globe. And another one looking at sort of x-rays and, and anomalies that chiropractors find on x-rays and report and so all that sort of stuff. So we're doing a variety of things in clinical, but they don't always run in clinical. Some go into education as well. We have a, a guy here, Danny, who's suddenly taken over sort of an interest in technology and incorporating that in education. And this is a screenshot of one of his lectures that he did. Um, I'm going to be looking at aspects of concussion. The, the whole thing is around sort of engaging the student. So he's doing a heck of a lot more engagement online, social media and stuff like that, and doing a variety of other things. But one really good thing is he's looking at using virtual images of, of students doing and performing tasks such as setups and manipulation and palpation and then giving them direct feedback on that video image. So he's actually using technology to revolutionize, to some extent, the whole of the, the very subjective, otherwise, teaching of skills that chiropractors use. Alistair's stuff is around spinal movement, but Alistair's also playing a role within the clinical stuff and within the education thing. It's a very integrated thing. People tend to play with each other, so to speak. It's probably not the thing to say. My stuff on cervical spine and sport has been mentioned. That's my token Bianca picture. Um, for those who've seen her, you don't need a picture to show you again. For those who haven't, you've got a shock coming. Um, very, very sort of energetic character. But between us, we've put together a research group now, which I think has got around about eight to ten people in. But we're encompassing six elite sports. We've now picked up um, boxing in both. We've, we've, reuni we've reunified Ireland. We've got uh, a group in the Commonwealth Boxing Squad from Northern Ireland working with a group from the Southern Irish Olympic Squad, so that's quite entertaining. Um, 
including physio physios, not physios, physiologists, as well as uh, physiotherapists who work for teams. We've done stuff in two premiership football academies. We're working with top end uh, rugby league and union. Finnish ice hockey and uh, with skeleton ball. So there's a variety of different things we've been playing with. It's all around the neck because people tend to have problems with that. Then there's another thing here, the ergonomics. This is something I don't normally talk about because it's sort of just it's out on the side, really. But over the last 10 years, uh, I had a chiropractor doing a PhD with me who then moved to go to Murdoch and take up the clinical role down there. And we've been working steadily on this area for about 10, 12 years now. And we have a quite a track record of papers based upon uh, basically when you sit down, what determines whether or not you're comfortable when you're going to start moving. And we've been mapping people's backsides using all sorts of techniques for a while. It's a strange thing, but somebody has to do it. Um, you know, that's the whole thing about neck and SI, I suppose, isn't it really? One into the other. But we've, we've been doing that, and we've created some quite interesting technology now because we've now developed with a guy in China a method of mapping temperature and humidity in enclosed spaces using sensors rather than, you, you've probably all seen the stuff they use on beds to illustrate pressure mapping. They're fatally flawed, and most people who use them don't like them because they break down very easily, you've got to recalibrate them regularly and so on. So we didn't like that problem. So we decided to go back to basics and develop a map that could use reliable sensors. So we've done that. And because of that, that's the bit that's technologically ahead of everybody else, and we are world leading on that. So we can do this now, and we're, we've also got algorithms put in place that we, means that we can predict when a person's going to want to move, about 15 minutes ahead of when they want to move. It's getting there. Ref is the important thing, though. And this is the thing that I, I think people talk about it, but they don't really know. You've got to go through it, and you've got to go through the pain of it. And before you get the realization. The clinical stuff we're doing is nice, but if it gets published in CMT, and by the way, I'm an editor of CMT, so I know what I'm talking about here, it's not, in, it's not really got an in, impact factor. And if it does get an impact factor, I think we've calculated about 1.3 at the most. Now, that means nothing to most people. But at the end of the day, it means a lot to people in REF. Impact factor is important. I'm pushed to publish in Impact Factor 3 plus journals just to maintain a certain level of expectation within the university. That's what they aim at. I've got to pull in money from external sources, not within the profession, but outside. I've been very fortunate. I've had about three quarters of a million in funding in the last 12 years or so, which is not much in the great scheme of things. You're up against people who get that in a weekend in some of these institutions. So you've got real problems when you come to matching and playing the game. On top of that, you also need PhD students through. I've been quite lucky, really. I mean, in the cervical spine, we haven't really put anybody through. But in this one, I've put three or four through. And this is going to be the big problem. It seriously is going to be a big problem. It's great to register a marker, but you've got to know what you're up against. You've got to play a game. And that takes time and money. And at the same time, you've got to go in with a realistic expectation of failure. Because the whole thing is banked against you as an individual when you go in, if you're from a university that's not Russell Group. They're trying their hardest to reduce you. Give you a perspective. The most you can get out of it, if you're lucky at the bottom end, would be a couple of hundred thousand a year, free to do research with. The University of uh, South Wales, I think, gets around about couple of million, maybe. Russell Group, one of my friends in Cambridge, was telling me they dropped down from the very top bar, down one little bar. I mean, we can only sort of, it's rarefied atmosphere up there. You, you can only aspire to that in your dreams, you know? They dropped down one bar. They lost three postdoctoral research assistantships, three PhD positions, three research assistantships, and about half a million pounds per year just by dropping down one little bar. We go up one little bar, we get a little bit of money. You think, great. 
It's a very difficult game. Remember where your perspectives are. So yes, there's two billion put into the pot. But then there's a lottery every week and you could be the winner in your dreams. So you just have to, it's perspective more than anything else. It's very, very difficult. And I'm just talking as one of those people who's come back from the war, seen it, done it, been there, don't want to do it again. And I'm in it and I can't avoid it. And that's one of the issues we've got. So that just gives perspective more than anything else. We are looking at ref compatibility, but we need chiropractors who are doing PhDs, and not only doing PhDs, but when they've done the PhDs, converting it into real papers. The minimum number of papers I'm expected to put into that, between four and six. And those four and six papers have got to be in journals of impact factor three or more. And they've got to be with a single theme. I'm lucky I'm already there with the ones I've got since the last ref. And I brought money in, so I'm happy with that as well. So I've ticked the boxes and I can just walk away. But the point is, if you want to start from a cold start and run forward, you've got a hell of a hill to climb. And that's what you've got to be able to do. To stand a chance. So it's a great thing to go into. It's a great thing to start now, but we've already finished. Because you need to put impact statements together. You've got lots of stuff. And it's a lot of... The way they do it is designed to sort of favour certain things. What you think is fantastic within the world of chiropractic means diddly squat to these guys because they've got billions to play with and huge numbers of patients out there and you're ranking against that. So you've got to be very careful how you phrase it and you've got to try to, to look carefully at how you can fit within and make your stuff dovetail within theirs to make yours better by reflection. It's not easy. Anyway, on that depressing note, the end. <laughs>